So it's that time of the year. And like I told you last week, if you're a subscriber and you listen to one of my monologues last week, NFL football season, gridiron football season is getting ready to start. Gridiron football season does not start in August, as many people believe. Gridiron football season starts in July, whenever mini camp starts, whenever the rookies and the veterans report. That's when the season starts. So most of the veterans on NFL teams are returning this weekend and next week. This week in general is Raiders, Bills, Jaguars, and Rams. Now next week on the 26th, which will be a Tuesday, a week from today, that's when all the other veterans from the rest of the team show up. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because whenever the NFL window opens, American soccer window closes. Now, you may be thinking what I mean about that. Basically, what I mean is American soccer, American traditional football, their opportunity to gain fans and win fans, that window closes whenever gridiron football season starts. You see, what a lot of people don't understand, a lot of new soccer fans and a lot of European football fans outside of America, American soccer, their window of opportunity to get the American people's um, the American people's attention is between whenever the Super Bowl ends and the Super Bowl is usually the second or the third week of February. So American soccer has. Basically, between late February and the middle of July, late February and the middle of July to win fans. And if American soccer, I'm talking about MLS, NWSL, USL, if they're not able to win fans, they have to try again next year. Now, the sport is still growing. And that's the case for the MLS. Things are going to be different with this new Apple TV deal. However, the sport will still continue to grow. Despite popular belief, a lot of people believe that MLS is going to lose fan and lose viewership due to the Apple TV deal. Well, what those people don't realize or don't understand, a lot of MLS fans are not baby boomers. A lot of MLS fans are not Gen X. Those are more so NFL, NBA, and especially Major League Baseball and college football and college basketball fans. So great iron football, basketball, and baseball fans. Those sports have more Gen X and baby boomer. So because of that, those sports rely heavy on cable network. They rely heavy on cable television. Because Baby Boomer and Gen X grew up with cable television being the popular thing. Now for Gen Y, Gen Z, and the generation after that, we're growing up in an era where the cord is being cut. We're watching sports. We're, we're more so watching sports highlights on YouTube, on our cell phone. We're more so streaming games. We're watching games. We're watching just te- just any form of viewership any form of television we're watching it on our cell phones we're watching it on our laptop we're not heavily reliant on cable television and we're part of the generation we're the generation where we choose what we want to see we're we're not allowing cable networks to force us to watch what they provide for us so that's the difference so the apple tv deal is just going to help the mls build a better relationship and a better bond with the Gen X, I mean the Gen Y, the Gen Z, and the generation after that. So, you know, attendance when it comes to the popularity popularity aspect in this window, did the MLS achieve? You know, did it have the MLS gain more fans during this 2022 NFL gridiron offseason window? I can't really say. 
I don't have the numbers. I don't have the analytics to determine that. But I'll just give the MLS my grade for this NFL offseason window of them gaining fans. And for me, I will give them a C. I'll give them a C. And the main reason why I'm giving them a C is because you have teams like New England that they're still, they still have that seller's mentality where you get rid of a lot of valuable players and you don't receive the same amount of valuable players in return. New England was the Supporter Shield champion last year. And the reason behind that is not only because they had Gustavo Bo, but they had solid players from the top of the roster to the bottom of the roster. They were the most solid team, the most balanced team in the MLS regular season last year. Now, of course, they got bounced out of the first round. I mean, well, not first round, but they got bounced out the first playoff game last year because they were most likely out of gas. But the MLS, there's still a lot of clubs that are sellers. And they're just losing valuable players and they're not replacing them with the same caliber type of valuable players. They either get an older veteran or they get somebody who's super young and not mature and still has some growing up to do. So you giving up a developed player in return for either an old guy or a super young guy who hasn't got much playing time. That what causes you to lose fans. Another reason why I gave him a C. It's, it's still not a lot of offense. Teams are... I, I understand the season is long, but offense. Us new era sports fans, we want to see offense. Now, I would have given them a, a D if it wasn't for... They would have got a D or an F if it wasn't for the Apple TV deal. And if, if and if the Sounders didn't win the CONCACAF Champions League. Another reason they have a C. You still have big market teams and pioneers that's not playing well. The Easter Conference has to get better. Now, how can the MLS improve next year? Now, if, if, if I had data with me, if I had numbers to really break down, you know, fan attendance from... 2021 and TV viewership on ESPN from 2021 all the way to now, then I'll be able to do that. But I don't. But from a spectator's point of view, I'm just going to give how the MLS can improve next year. Because the window's closing. Next Tuesday, the window's closed. Every NFL team will be back. Um, every NFL veteran will be at training camp. And as soon as soon as the veterans touches the parking lot, I'm telling you, as soon as the veterans for every NFL team, as soon as their car touches the parking lot, that's when the NFL season starts. NFL season starts does not it, it doesn't start when the players get on the practice field. Oh no. It starts as soon as the veteran players step on the facility, that's when the season starts. And that's why you that, that's why you're gonna have Media people, they're not they're not going to start recording when the players get on the field. No, the media people, they are going to start recording as soon as the players park their cars on the parking lot. A lot a lot of the big sports media um, personalities and journalists. If they have not returned from vacation yet this week, this weekend, they'll be back from vacation. This week is their final vacation days until holiday season. This week is it. This is, this is it. Next week, every major big media company, ESPN, Fox, CBS, NBC, their army of sports journalists is going to return back. So MLS, th this is another thing. Th 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 that's a sign. These big media companies puts their since their people on vacation during your league during your season big media says 
Uh, there's no there's no serious league. There's no newsworthy sports topics going on this time of the year. Go on vacation. That's how that's the that's how much respect they have for you, MLS. It's little. The size of respect that these big media companies have for you, MLS, is the size of a mustard seed. It's so tiny you can barely see it. They don't have respect. They don't have a lot of respect for you to a point where they're willing to send their top media personalities and their top journalists on vacation during your season, MLS. That should tell you something. Now, should you consider uh, moving your games to the fall? Well, you can't do that because a lot of your teams don't have their own stadium yet. So you're not you're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. So we can't have that kind of conversation right now. But the kind of conversation we can have MLS is you becoming more offense, offensive, giving us more skilled players. You know, this past weekend when I was watching Dallas and Atlanta and just other teams, uh, Vancouver, Portland, the thing that I didn't like was there's too many missed shots on goals. And another thing, players struggle when they have the ball. Like on the offense, players cannot juke. It's like they struggle to make a move on the defender. It's like players can only score and they can only score when they're off the ball. The only way players can score is by a good pass. And that's that's kind of unrealistic because of the speed of the game and the high intensity of the game, every pass will not be a good pass. So that's why you need players who are good offensively that whether it's a bad pass or whether they or whether they don't get any passes, they have the ball on their own, that they can create their own shots. I don't see a lot of MLS players creating their own shots. And that's something I want to see more of. I want to see more skillful offensive players. Because offense is what drives the TV ratings up. Offense is what fills the stadium. Not great defense. Defense is boring. We don't care about a chess match. And we don't care about trying to figure out what kind of defensive formation the team is setting up on the field. We want to be entertained. So MLS, you have to find more guys who can create their own shots, who are capable of juking the defender. You know, guys like Cucho Hernandez, tall, fast, and strong guys like John Duran. And if you try to pull his jersey, he's going to give you a strong, stiff arm, and your back is going to be touching that grass. We need guys who can still score even if the pass is not good. We need guys who are confident to take a shot and don't dribble the ball too much in the box because they're too nervous on whether or not they're going to score. That is how you will win more fans during the NFL Gridiron offseason MLS. And the same goes for you, USL and NWSL. More offense. And speaking of you, NWSL, Jessica Bierman, you really got to be careful with the politics. It's one thing to be progressive. And then there's another thing to be ultra progressive. And being ultra progressive will not help you become inclusive. It will turn you to an exclusive institution. And that's something that I'm going to talk more about on Saturday Night Special. It ain't no easy way.